Well, hello everybody and welcome to this episode of G-Bears Off-Grid Ways. I'm set in the desert and today we're going to go back and talk about twirly whirlies. Uh, no, that's not what they're called. Wind turbines twirly whirly. Yeah, it's a twirly whirly. You can see it twirly whirling. Okay, so <clears throat> I got a email with some questions from Israel and they came from Mayor Dahane. I hope I pronounced that right, Mayor. And if I didn't, forgive me. All right. So you saw the, the wind turbine spinning out there. Okay, that turbine is a KT5 by Thermodyne Systems. And it's rated to produce 1,850 watts total maximum output at 90 mile per hour winds okay 90 mile an hour per winds mean that the blades the blade design that's on that system will stall s-t-a-l-l -L, stall at 90 miles per hour even if the wind goes faster than 90 miles per hour that unit cannot turn any faster revolutions 90 mile an hour is the maximum for the blade design on the turbine. So let me uh, straighten you out here. People want to use wind turbines to completely power their house. And I think a battery bank is going to be adequate to power their house in a power outage. Well, that's a big misconception. It doesn't work that way. Now you've been watching my gauge right here. This is my wind turbine input. Right now it's zero, zero watts, zero amps coming in. Oh, there's uh, 721 watts. Okay, so right now we're in a seven to 12 mile an hour uh, winds with about an 18 mile an hour gust. So that's all the power I'm producing out of an 1850 watt turbine and normal wind speeds. So there is no such thing as a magical turbine out there that will power your whole house. You would have to have 90 mile an hour winds, constant, non-stop, non-intermitting, no variance in the wind speeds, constantly going 90 miles per hour, when you'd be in the middle of a hurricane, and if your turbine was still at the top of its mast or pole, then you would be producing 1,850 watts of power, which still isn't enough to power your whole house. Okay, so let me get you back down to his questions. First question, suppose there are two generators. One produces 12 volts, 1,000 watts, and the other produces 220 volts at a thousand watts. The second one being more expensive. So in both cases, you need to charge a bank of 12 volt batteries using a suitable controller and use a converter to, or means an inverter, to use 220 volts for the home at 50 hertz. Okay. No, won't work. It's impossible. Totally, totally impossible. Um, I know it down jumping down to your um, third question is uh, uh, what type of battery would I, you want? You want to want 12 volt or 24 volt? Um, how much maximum amps? Uh, how many batteries do you need? All of those questions are irrelevant. Even if you got a what they call a Tesla power pack for the solar companies provide for whole homes to produce electricity if your power goes out from the grid. Um, you can keep your refrigerator and your major appliances all running with that uh, power pack, and they are very expensive, but that power pack will only keep your um, appliances running for up to 24 hours. So you only get one day out of that. It's not going to do you much. There is no such thing as a magical wind turbine that will produce enough power 
on a regular constant basis because winds are not regular and constant. Winds go up, winds go down, winds are not constantly always at the same speed unless you got your head sticking out the window of a jet while it's trying to reach ultrasonic speeds and cross the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, it doesn't work that way. A wind turbine should only be used to supplement and I emphasize supplement your input power from your solar panels. That's what mine does. When the sun is not out and the winds are blowing, I'm still putting an input into my battery banks. Okay. Now, you can see this just now just went over one amp. That's nothing. That's not going to provide you with anything for any period of time. Okay, now my batteries are up at 14 volts. So my battery bank is fully charged because I've got sun and I've got a little bit of wind through the day. But the sun is what has charged my batteries up completely and the wind is only adding a supplementary uh, uh, amount of power to that. So to answer your question on your first question, 12 volts, 1000 watts would be a DC battery charger. Even if the uh, PMA is an alternator using three wires, alternating current, and coming in and going through a bridge rectifier like mine is, it's a 12 volt system. And that's for charging batteries. You can't use that to connect directly into your grid and supplement your grid power. Because you'd be putting 12 volts DC coming off of these two wires, the other side of the, the uh, bridge connector, and that would uh, be 12 volts DC connected to your electrical panel, you'd have an explosion and a fire. You can't do it, okay? So don't even attempt to, to, to do it. No matter what anybody tells you, never try to connect DC directly to your panel. Now, I could take these three wires off, and that would be AC coming in but it's still only 12 volts. It's not going to, well, it's a little higher than 12 volts. It's gonna be around 13, 14, 15 volts or so coming in. But that still cannot connect to your 220 volt electrical panel. Now your other one, the 220 volt at a thousand watt turbine. That sounds like a grid tie turbine. That one would go on top of a mast or a pole, and then the wires would come down, run through a shunt and a breaker, and go directly into your electrical panel. And when the winds blow, it would give you supplemental um, electricity to your existing incoming grid electricity. It will not run your whole house. It, it just will not you're still gonna have to have the grid behind it. And you can't use that one to charge batteries because you'd be redundant. You'd have to come in and use a reverse inverter, bringing 220 volts, 50 cycles in, and then come out of the inverter going to 12 volts DC or 24 volts DC. Now while I'm at that uh, 12 volts, 24, 48 volts, Yes, you can buy um, turbines that will be rated for any one of those voltages. And it has to match the voltages of your battery bank. I use a 12 volt battery bank. So mine is a 12 volt um, KT5 uh, wind turbine. Now if I wanted to change my battery banks over by rewiring them, and changing it to either 24 volts or 48 volts, that turbine will not work for me. I'd have to get rid of it and go to a turbine that meets the same voltage as my battery bank. Okay. Now my battery bank, because I'm totally off grid, I have no grid power here. There are no power lines from a city or from the uh, local uh, power companies that come to my property. 
So this unit right here, the Ames Power uh, Low Frequency Series Inverter, takes 12 volts DC electricity out of my battery bank, runs it through these really heavy wires, in through the inverter, and comes out the other side and goes to my electrical panel directly, producing 240 volts AC. And you say, well, why am I running 240 volts AC in the United States um, when that's a European thing, 220 to 240? Well, it's also a U.S. thing. We have 120 volts AC for running most appliances and stuff that you have. Now, a lot of your bigger stuff, air conditioners and um, power tools and things like that, could be 240 volts, which is basically 2 times 120. So this is the neutral. This is, uh, the red is 120 volts, and the black is 120 volts. So when those go into the panel, they go to the bus bars, and two separate bus bars. So I have 120 on one side of the panel and 120 on the other side of the panel. And then if I use the proper breaker, a 240 breaker, it connects two of these inputs through the breaker so that I have a 240 volt AC. Now since I have a lot of um, construction power tools in my shop, that's why I have that set up. Okay, now down here this wire comes, goes through here and goes out to my generator. Now just like a wind turbine, the numbers on your generators because this this generator is the same thing basically as a wind turbine except the wind turbine uses wind to turn it so the RPMs of turning that turbine are um, well they, they require a certain speed of wind to get them up to a certain RPM or revolutions per minute now here it says 6,500 in big numbers, max starting watts. And everybody goes, wow, that's a 6,500 watt generator. No, it is not. It's a 5,500 watt generator. The running watts are what you're talking about. 6,500 starting watts only happens for a split second when you start the generator. It'll never you'll never get 6,500 watts of power to power anything out of this generator. The max you're gonna get is 5,500 running watts. That's it, okay? But that's plenty to run my whole cabin if I need it. And I have to start this thing up every now and then because our illustrious government has decided to put all kinds of additives into our fuel and it makes the fuel very unstable to sit for long times. So we have to put stuff like called stable and uh, things like that into the fuel to make it uh, stay a little longer in the tank. But you can't just let it sit because that stuff will settle out. And then when you fire your generator up later on, it's going to blow your generator up. So you definitely got to make sure that you maintain your generator. Now, even if you're not running it on a regular basis, you still have to do standard oil changes especially out here in the desert because wind blows dust around and the fine dust gets on everything. And I'll show you what I mean. I had just dusted this unit off, <coughs> excuse me, um, I'd say three days ago. Okay, you see my fingerprint across there? That's dust. That's what I'm talking about, that fine dust. Now every now and then I come in here with either one of those little um, air spray cans that you use on your computer to blow dust around or my air compressor if I have it out I'll come in here with the air hose and I'll blow out the inside of this whole unit and try to get some of the dust out of it because that dust will cause your components to overheat okay so I've got all that covered so you say you wanted to uh, supplement your electricity at your house I suggest you go with solar panels. Okay, wind turbines sound like it's a cheaper way around it, but 
you will not power your whole house with a wind turbine. Even those gigantic ones that you see offshore or out in the middle of a field somewhere or in the middle of a desert, okay, those could be um, 1.67 megawatt to 5 megawatt. And that 5 megawatt, that's 5 million watts. Okay, 5 million with a big M. And uh, that's a lot of power. And those, even the small one, the 1 1.6 uh, megawatt, which is 1.67 million watts, will produce 1,500 amps. That's a lot of power. You don't need that much. But it won't produce that all the time because the winds do not blow all the time. Wind does not blow 24-7, seven, seven days a week, 365 or 366 days a year. It does not do that. So it's a supplemental electricity provider only. You also have to uh, remember that most turbines, on average, will only ever produce 35 to 40% of their max rating. Okay, and as you can see, I'm only getting 126, 115, 129, 121, 138. It's fluctuating up and down because that's what the wind does. So you cannot get a constant guaranteed charge or input from a wind turbine. Forget it. Move around that. Uh, solar panels are a better bet. Because if the sun is out, you've got power. And pretty much, I've noticed that every day when I wake up, the sun has risen. And every night, before I go in and have dinner, the sun has set. So, the sun is a pretty much a, a constant. And it doesn't matter how fast it goes. It does matter how long it stays out. So in the summertime, when you have those longer days, that always gives you more power through the day. All right, so we got through all that. I hope that answered enough of your questions. But uh, if you do go with solar panels, you're going to need enough solar panels. And uh, by the way, on your math, you said that uh, you're 220 volts, 40 amps at your house. And you say that's about 10,000 watts. No, it's actually 8,800 watts. Is, uh, you use uh, Ohm's law, volts times amps equal watts. And you can switch that around. Uh, watts divided by volts equals amps. Amps uh, uh, go divided into watts equals volts. So it always goes around in a full circle like that. So that remember that Ohm's law. Amps times volts equals watts. All right? So that's about all I could tell you on that. I hope I answered all your questions. Anybody else have questions about that? Leave them down at the bottom in the comment section. I'll be glad to answer those for you. Now, if you want to know about a little bit more about uh, small um, wind power uh, factors and things like that, you can go look up the small wind guidebook at energy.gov that's energy e n e r g y dot g o v and uh, look up small wind guidebook and that'll give you all of the particulars for small wind turbines for your house and um, your your cabins and things like that all right everybody thank you for joining me don't forget thumbs up down there don't forget to subscribe subscribe please 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 subscribe thank you this is g bear signing off